Today on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Interpower, the premier supplier of power system components for worldwide markets, we're making magic arms, designing a jacket that jams, and building 3D printers for the bio-curious. Let's dive deep down and grab the cockles of our hearts. Two-year-old Emma Lavelle was born with a congenital disorder called anthropoposis, and she would never gain the ability to lift her arms on her own power. Emma's parents turned to the researchers at Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children, who had been working hard on the Wilmington Robotic Exoskeleton, or REX. The REX prototype was made with all metal components and attached to a stand. It was bulky, and 25-pound Emma was much too small for it. The researchers needed something lighter, something that would attach to Emma's body and would be able to travel with her. They turned to 3D printing to find their solution, which came in the form of a Stratasys Dimension 3D printer. Researchers at the Delaware Hospital 3D printed an incredible custom prosthetic using lightweight ABS plastic. The result was the next generation Rex prosthetic that Emma calls her magic arms. The Rex Magic Arms helped her overcome her greatly limited joint mobility and underdeveloped muscles. And parts were easily replaceable with little more than the push of a button. All I know is that this little girl's magic arms are sure to warm even the coldest of hearts. We are all a bit envious of the many superhero toys and gadgets. I mean, who wouldn't want a wrist web slinger or cruise around in the Batmobile? Just saying. Oh! Well, watch out, Tony Stark. Cyber weapon hobbyist Patrick Breve has harnessed his excitement for heroic weaponry and turned it into a reality with his home-built laser gauntlet. The aluminum device opens up as the user inserts his forearm and clamps onto it using a spring lever system. An LED display on the side lights up once it's locked in place, letting the user know that it's ready to go. To zap something, all you have to do is push the button on the palm-mounted control module, which activates a server, causing the laser rig to rise out of the top of the gauntlet. Two red lasers aim at the target, and a thicker blue laser delivers the payload. All four are powered by a single 3.7 volt lithium ion battery, with two smaller batteries powering the LEDs and the servo. It took Patrick 120 hours to build the gauntlet, but I want to know the timetable for the entire suit. For I am Iron Woman. Uh, it's a little big, guys! Each time the universe expands, somebody finds a way to make the void just a bit smaller. Asteroid mining seems to be the key to a solar system-wide economy, promoting exploration and eventual interstellar trade. We're not talking spice from Arrakis, but it might be something like that. High five if you caught the Dune reference. Oh yeah! Deep Space Industries has plans to start prospecting and exploring space with intent to process and manufacture the resources of asteroids and distant planets. Their endeavor begins in 2015 when they'll fire three exploration satellites beyond our friendly skies. The long-range plans involve systems to grind asteroid materials in what has been dubbed a microgravity foundry, <clears throat> using a laser-driven 3D printer for building complex components without the assistance of gravity. A second company, Planetary Resources, has even jumped on the spice mining bandwagon, and it is apparent that an industry is beginning to develop. I'm fine with new industries, as long as I don't wind up as a moisture farmer on Tatooine. Are the references getting too nerdy? I could have mentioned the Jetsons movie, or the Ferillion Miner from the Coneheads. A new Kickstarter project from design group Machina of Mexico City allows users to create music through motion and touch sensors with a mobile app. The MJ version 1 MIDI controller jacket conceals a variety of sensors that sync to iOS and Android devices to produce electronic music through the wearer's movements. The current design contains three flexible touch sensors on a front pocket, an accelerometer in one sleeve, and a small joystick with four buttons on the other. Moving an arm at different speeds triggers beats at different tempos, while sliding a few fingers on the touch sensors adds notes like a small synthesizer. The jacket also conceals a power supply, which can be charged through a USB connection. Such an electrifying and fashionable jacket gives a whole new meaning to strut.
So everybody knows about 3D printers. <clears throat> Many people are even aware of 3D bioprinters with the ability to print living tissue with cells, which is all well and good unless you're the one paying for the printer or lack the PhD required to operate one. Now, a group of do-it-yourself engineers at the hackerspace BioCurious are developing an open source system that will be accessible to anybody with a soldering iron and a love of biology. The plans have been documented as an instructable, so for about 150 bucks, most of which is for Arduino boards and shields, you can build your own kidney. Well, maybe not yet, but you can do some serious biological research and help further 3D printing organs. Salvaging parts from an old HP printer and some CD drives to keep costs low, the makers had all the hardware needed. With a bit of Arduino expertise and some electronics hacking, the team has managed to write some intriguing prose with E. coli. The team's plan is to develop a scaffolding material so at-home printed organs can become a reality. But what are you going to do with a desktop kidney printer? At-home surgery? That's self-surgery. Can you print a surgeon to implant it? That sounds like a legitimate venture to me. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PD&D TV, I'm David Manti and this has been your Engineering Newswire.